down the better part. Because she wanted to hear the word, and Martha wanted to make sure that he was comfortable. But that ain't our subject tonight. We talked about our meditation last week. So I was dwelling on that, and God gave me he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And like she said, I went home and I did all my homework, and guess what those notes are? In my car, but they in my heart. <laughs> and so, we're going to look at Psalms 91. And tonight, with meditation, I got, I did my meditation, I said, oh, this is really good. And I was reacting, she just, I said, what do you read? She told me Psalms 51. She said, yes, I trust her, y'all. <laughs> and then she said, she, had, she read that one, so I read about Paul being in the shipwreck. So when I look at he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So once I do my meditation, I got to stay somewhere. That's right. And so there is a secret place in God. And he that bought up in that place will understand more and more about God. Now this is David talking about that secret place. And if we go back to the life of David, we look at the fact of Everything that David did, he was a warrior. Yeah. David was a person that loved women. Okay. David was a person that would fight at the drop of a hat. But as he got in trouble, he knew a secret. And God said he was a man after my own heart because what did he do? He repented. Yeah. He told in Psalm 51, he asked God not to take the Holy Spirit away from him. Yes. Another time when he was on the front line, and as he was on the front line, God sent Nathan to him Hallelujah. to let him know yes. that you didn't do this right. Why did you need to count the people when God had already known and his statistics wasn't right? Because it took him almost three months to do it. And as he did it, I'm sure it was some babies that came along. So therefore, his statistics wasn't right. It's almost like as soon as you get the roster for work, somebody to move on and it's like you got to scratch out their name because that person no longer there. But God said he was a man after his own heart because he knew how to repent. And even when, the th when Nathan came to him, and, he got, and Nathan gave him three choices. He said, I'm going to take the one that God said that I can have. Because God will judge me fairly. Yeah. And that was the one where he had to do three days. And God, God judged him. And after those three days, people, got, people died and everything. And after God judged him, he was okay. And that's the secret place. We got to know what's under the shadow of the Almighty. And when I know that I'm under the shadow of the Almighty, the blood of Jesus, nothing can take me away from the blood. Deuteronomy say blood is life. And we will sing the song that about the blood. It reaches the highest mountain. And it flows through the lowest valley. And one thing about blood, blood don't die. That's why we can't drink it. God said don't drink that. They, they put it on the altar. Because the blood of Jesus, if the blood of Jesus die, then God is dead. But God is alive for what? Evermore. So that ain't it. That ain't it. So we know that if I abide in the secret place. And now look at the word he. It lets me to know that this is a person that has to do this. This is not an animal. He. A pronoun. He that body. So I know that it's a person that got to do this. That dwell. A person that's going to stay. So as I'm meditating, I'm staying somewhere. I'm not moving around. I'm staying. And one thing about it, I got to stay under the blood. Because if I stay under the blood and I make my mishap under the blood, my spirit is going to let me know that I need to get back right in fellowship. You know, if I wounded any soul, if I caused one foot to go astray, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me even of the secret sins I do not see. And Paul said, I die daily. And if I die in daily, I'm forever keeping myself in the right tap with God. You know, one thing I always say to Eunice, I say, it grieves 
our heart. Because when we was coming up, well, my boys know how to fast. My boys know how to give tithes because we came up doing that air. Yeah, right. And we know how to do that to keep our blessing going on. But it grieves my heart today to see how some people don't know what it is to fast. Some people don't, won't even give their tithes and know that God will make a way for them. It grieves my heart to know that the things we are being fed to sleep by the enemy. And the Bible said these mm. things crept in. Unaware. So, you know, we She's bring them in the church and if the nobody end. says, honey, your dress is too short My or you've got too much cleavage, then we're allowing them to say that it's okay. But it ain't okay. Because the Bible asks us to dress in modification. We need to dress to become holiness. My modification may not be yours, but I tell you what. I should know and I should feel if I got to ask you if something right or something is this, then no, I shouldn't do it. Because something should happen within my spirit Amen. to let me know that this is not right. Amen. Amen. So therefore, I got to realize that my secret place is, guess what it is? It's a secret. It's a secret. And everybody is not going to know about this place if you're not in the world of God. It's a secret place. Because David know how to get intimate with God. He knew how to know that he was out of the will of God. And when it's almost like your shoes is on the wrong feet, I still laugh at the kids today when your shoes is on the wrong feet. Something is not right. Lord, if I can't feel you. I know I was praying to the Lord about a situation. And what is our biggest thing we pray about? Money. Money. <laughs> and I was standing at the sink. And I had this bill that I have this bill that needs to be paid. <laughs> no, actually, it's more than a thousand dollars, Brother Johnny. But you know what God said? It was almost like he called my name. I was at the sink. He says, I'm an on-time God. It was almost like he said, Deborah, I'm an on-time God. I know you got that bill. I said, Lord, I'm not going to pray about that money anymore. <laughs> and that's what I said to him. I said, I'm not going to pray. It was like, I'm, I said, God, you're an on-time God. I'm going to take you at your word. You're an on-time God. And he's showing me how I need to take care of that bill. Because he told me he was an on-time God. And you know, I got to take him at his word. You know why? Because... He's ruled the universe. Right. Yeah. He's over whoever your bill collector is. Yeah. And he can give you grace and favor. Because the Bible says the righteous procure favor. Yeah. They get favor. Yeah. It's a benefit to live in righteousness. Yeah. Well, I read Proverbs. That's my, my book I love. Because it talks about righteousness and it talks about wisdom. It talks about understanding. And it also talks about if you're out of the fellowship with God, how to get back in. Now that's Solomon. Because Solomon took what I was reading. I'm reading the book of Kings. And Solomon, good David, before he died, and every parent got to give their kids instruction. Yeah. If you got to tell them right and you got to tell them what the wrong is. Amen. And then you got to give them a tissue because they're going to look at you and they're going to point out their nose. But that's okay. You gave them the word. <laughs> and David said to Solomon, I need you to keep this covenant. He said, it's in the second book, of, the first book of Kings, the second verse, the second chapter. He said, I need you to keep this covenant. Because his father had, he already had a covenant. And he told him, I need you to keep it that the throne may be blessed. So therefore, he was passing down the blessing. Because David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor your seed begging for bread. So if I'm walking in the way of righteousness, and I believe the word, guess what? My kids can't beg for bread. Because that's ah, the word of God. Glory. My kids will never not be blessed because I practice holiness. I practice the walk in the way of God. I don't care who does it, wherever I fellowship at, I have a standard to live. Because my overall goal is why I come to church. I come to church so when my eyes are closed and my soul is gone to God, I want to hear well done now. I don't come to church for no other thing. Because I'm leaving work. And I came here because I'm working on this side of town. And I said, I got to come to church. So in coming to church, as long as I'm in the fellowship of righteousness, I can fellowship with you. But being in that secret place of the 
God. Most high. Who is the most high God? <clears throat> so when I'm in the secret place of the most high, and I dwell with him, and I ask God to lead me and to guide me, I will not stumble. I will not fall. Because I'm asking God that Lord allow me into your space. Yeah. Allow me to be a part of you, Lord. Oh, yeah. He said, I didn't come there to righteousness. If you're righteous, you stay righteous. But I come for the Lord's sheep. Yeah. They need me. Yeah. If you already are holding the stay, but those that's out there, we need to bring in. Because they need to taste of what we have. And when we taste of what we have, when they see that what we have, they realize that we have problems. But we know how to take it to the Lord. They realize that famine comes, but I know who, where my next meal come from. Because he never going to see the righteous forsaken. So somebody going to give you something. Somebody, one young man at church to Sunday, he said, the Lord told me to sow a seed to you. And he gave me some money. I said, bless you, son. I said, you're the first person to ever say that. You, somebody was going to sew something in. You know why what happens? Because if they see you looking a certain way, or if they see you smiling all the time, they say, amen. They don't think you need anything. But just like the preacher say, I hurt just like you hurt. My feelings get hurt, and sometimes I don't like what's going on today. But in all of that, you know what I do now that I'm more mature in God? I say, Lord, I acquaint it with the fact of this is how you feel when we do something to you. When you have a person that don't like you, you have a person that did everything, you have poured your heart out in helping that person to accept you. And that person look at you as like, oh well. Look at our father. A father's love. All we got to do is say, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Try and the Bible says, heaven rejoice yeah, that one so when that one sheep comes back. Yeah. Heaven rejoice. Yeah. More so than the 99, heaven yeah. rejoice. Yeah. When that one soul come in yeah. and we look at him and say, well, where they been? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And God would say, Back off. He's home. Rejoice. And I can't have rejoice because I'm looking at him with his pants hanging down. And I, and I should just say, let me give you my belt. Or let me um, help you out. Is there anything you need? But God is good and we have to get to the point that the word is for everybody. Because the Bible said that he will not even come back until everybody knows. In the utmost part. So we got to realize that we cannot be selfish. We can't just dwell in this secret place any kind of way. We got to make sure that we are cleansed. And that we are living how God wants us to live. And if I keep myself in check, that my spirit is radiant to anybody, God will be grateful. Because we are his servants. We are sinners saved by grace. I'm no better than anybody else, and I can fall and make a mistake. And let me tell you, if I was, I don't care how much Holy Ghost I have, if I was in the wrong place, the judge don't want to hear any speaking in tongues. Now you better pray to God for mercy and then get some favor. But guess what?